I remember it being one of the most visually stunning places I've ever been. I think everyone was pretty shocked at how cool the golf course was. That one in particular was much different than any golf course I'd been to. An insanely, infinitely unique experience. This guy's like demented play world, the crazy mounds and crazy greens and funnels. And like I felt like I was in battle half the day. Oh no, it's back the road is like exponentially worse than an oh no anywhere else. God, no way, no. The fifth hole at Tobacco Road is one of the lowest moments of my life. Maybe the best moment in foreplay history. Of course it would happen to Frankie though. It's gonna challenge you. It's a course that I wanna play again. I wanna make a plan to play it again. That type of look, I mean, the type of architecture you, I've just never seen before. I mean, it's a must play. A once in a lifetime type golf course. I would play Tobacco Road a hundred times again. I don't think I can play it enough in my life. The four playboys land in North Carolina, ready to embark on a long anticipated golf trip for the bunch. Four courses in five days. First up, a 50 minute drive to Sanford, North Carolina, home of the Tobacco Road Golf Club, designed by the late Mike Strance in 1998. Just a real uh, rustic, gnarly looking atmosphere. Uh, and I, I knew immediately it could be something really, um, it's not only spectacular, but unique. I had no idea that Tobacco Road was a, a golf course. Never heard of it. There's the there it is, Tobacco Road. Oh, look at that logo. Yeah, as you're approaching it, there's a very curious feeling. Everybody's kind of looking around, like, what the hell are we going to see here? And you kind of could tell right away when we pulled in that you're in for something wild. Entering through wooden farmhouse gates, Patrons wind to the heart of the property to find an idyllic clubhouse nestled among the towering Carolina pines. Rustic and quaint, the clubhouse provides a warm welcome suitably matched with that southern hospitality of the staff. Chris, Chris, nice, nice to meet you, you guys. Nice, nice to meet you. Trent. Trent, nice to meet you. Trent, nice to meet you. Frankie. Frankie Chris, nice Thanks for having us. This is awesome. incredible. No, not a problem at all. I think you guys have already got your keys. Mm -hmm. the yep. yep. Um, tonight, you guys are going to be the only ones on the property. Yep, yep, yeah. Let's say this will do here. Yeah, the Stewart cabin was freaking awesome. A little scary. I get a little, I get a little nervous sleeping in like woods, sea area. It had an old, sort of like vintage, rustic vibe to it. The boys settle into the vintage Stuart cabin for the night and prepare for 18 holes of golf unlike anything they've ever experienced before. He asked me, like, can I get B-roll of you brushing your teeth? And I was like, sure. But normally I would be pretty much naked brushing my teeth. Totally natural. I slept like a rock, but you, you snored a ton. Fuck. You know what's weird is if I, like, moved or made a noise, you stopped. Love sleeping with Trent. Not to sound weird, it's a homey feeling. I love I love having that the big fella next to me. I feel like no, no, no monsters are going to come in and get me. <laughs> he said that? That's what Frankie said? I like staying with Frankie, and if he views me as his protector, then I will lay my life on the line for Frankie Borelli, if I need to. But yeah, I'm, I'm, Fra <laughs> I'm Frankie Sordor, he's, he's my brand. Woke up about an hour before those guys. It's gonna be a big event. Oh, listen to a fur. Wake up, girl, wake up. Backwards. Go forward. Yeah, I can just grab another one. 
Oh. Never a doubt. I don't know what I did different there, but it worked. Well, that took entirely too long, but the crew has made it to the course. As Riggs fuels up before the round, Frankie is in the pro shop having trouble resisting something. You take out your putter with this stuff, man. Are you kidding me? I just had to have it. It's just a weapon. Imagine being in a match and you need to nail a five foot putt to secure this thing, and I pull out that putter with a red tobacco road co uh, head cover on it. I mean, if he thinks he can just buy a new red hot putter head cover, that's going to change anything. He's delusional. Here's my little warm up dance. Boy, I'd pay $10,000 for that first tee shot right now. Look at this practice screen. I mean, this is what we're gonna see out there? They say, I mean, I just dropped my ball. <laughs> <laughs> we are gonna get, I mean, we are gonna get killed today. Look, look at this, look at this, look at this. Imagine I do this on the course. Oh, look, I was trying to go up there. <laughs> you go like, up there. Imagine I do that on the course. I think you will. Yeah, I would imagine so. Yeah, I'm Martha, hello. I'm Hi Martha. Hello. We talked about no, rank bags. Frankie, the, nice to meet you. Shop. How's it going? Trim. So I've been our head professional for the last four-ish years. Um, and as kind of we're growing as a business, I've kind of moved into this different role of really focusing on our social media, how it's impacting our business, um, that kind of growth, content development. And we also do all of our merchandise buying. So kind of a new role for me. So here's the game. Uh, we're at the first, we're in the first tee, we're playing four rounds of golf. I calculated the course handicaps for everybody. Everyone's going to start at that number under par for the week. Okay. We're going to see who finishes with the lowest score. So, Trent Daddy is a 32 course handicap here. 25 index goes to 32. Okay. He gets 120 shots for the four days. So he starts, <laughs> Trent Daddy's currently 120 under par. I'm definitely thinking that's not enough. Frankie gets 12 shots here. 9.2 index goes to a 12. Uh, he starts the week, four rounds of golf, 45 under par. It's just not enough, but we'll make something happen. 45 under par. I'm 120. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I am a 6.4 index. I go to an eight here at Tobacco Road. I start the week 31 under par. Okay. That's not a lot. I know That's gonna not. disappear fast. Fast. Uh, and today we'll do our classic skins game. First tee, 547 yard par par. <laughs> <laughs> we thought it was going to be a very unique golf course, but like I don't think any of us knew exactly how crazy it was going to be. Strands is intentionally trying to mess with your mind. There is a lot of visual intimidation, but everywhere there is visual intimidation, he is telling you where to hit it. Here on number one, we start on a long par five. He is making an arrow with those two mounds, so your line is straight through the middle of them. A small bunker out there was strategically placed for you to aim at. This morning, it's a two and a half, three shot hole, depending on where your drive ends up. A good opening par five, where you can get your full swings in, but once you get to the green, things get a little more interesting. Oh, 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 oh. Let's go, baby. Boy, I'd pay $10,000 for that first tee shot right now. I dumped it! Oh my god, lucky. Oh, oh, it's real out lucky. there. Look at my divot. If Jesus Christ appeared in front of my face and said, You will be fine on this first tee, just swing freely. I have you. I'd be like, Okay. And then I'd continue to just dribble the ball up the first tee. I've done it multiple times now at some of the best golf courses in the world. Trent is a machine, man. First tee. I'm the best in the world. Good ball. Absolutely perfect. I don't remember anything. I have such a bad memory. Riggs is like Rain Man. Frankie topped his first tee shot. Oh, no, 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 no. Then I, once we got close to the green, I just lost him. He's like in the mud. He's screaming. He's making noise. He's over there uh, kind of by himself. Frankie's in another world over there. And to make things worse, I'm wearing a nice, blueberry outfit. I got a dark blue quarter zip on. I got my light blue pants on. I'm like, man, do I look good today? Look good, feel good, play good, right? 
What a waste. Oh, it went in my socks, man. And I didn't even find my ball. That's the worst part. I did not even find my ball in there. Day's ruined. One hole in. Didn't go great for anyone, really. One hole, one skin. I think that's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Look, we don't really play that good of golf very often, and it was very obvious after one that like, we weren't going to play very good golf today. Number two is a relatively short par four. I'll carry off the tee. The fairway slants right to left, so depending on what your ball flight is, anything right center where the mound comes down off of 11 will work. That bunker is not where you want to be. No clue. I have no idea if that's good enough. Went a little right. The green is surrounded by sand with some steep roll off when you get up there. Uh, oh yeah, double. The first par three on the day and it's a doozy. No matter where you look, you're completely surrounded by sand. The best line is to be a little short over the right mound No! But if you just carry the top mound, you should be fine as well. Yeah! Oh. Riggs knocks in a par and we're off to number four. Another par five. A true risk reward hole. If you aim at the corner of the waste area on the left, it makes it a short carry over the rest of it to the green. No! Oh, oh, went right through everything! He's high stepping. He's high stepping. Great call, Trey Dad. My heart's thumping. <laughs> the further right you go, the longer it is. Oh, fuck off! And speaking of long... Frankie is like sneaky, one of the slowest players in the whole world. Every shot is like a circus, every time. What a shot. Yeah. Shot of the day. Yep. Yep. Wow, what an up and down that was. Frankie nice shows Riggs that patience is a virtue, something he will certainly need on five. The fifth hole at Tobacco Road is one of the lowest moments of my life. Uh, I remember when it happened, I had tweeted out, something just happened at Tobacco Road that I don't know I'll ever get over. Number five, a short par four so hitting driver is totally up to you. This is probably one of the most contested debates of anyone who plays out here. Whether or not you go for it on number five or you lay up. Frankie tried to go for it and it did not go well. From where we are, it is probably a 275 yard carry with a false front on the green that will bring your ball 50 yards back down the fence. This won't be the first time Trent struggles to get out of a bunker. <laughs> Nothing to it. <laughs> if you don't think this is coming back to my feet and potentially past us. Oh no, no, stay, stay. No! I knew it too. I was like, this is coming back to me. You would think a rational person would say, all right, now hit it even a little bit harder. Nope, nope. Oh no. Sit. I don't know what to do. A nice chip from Frankie, and he sets up for an eight foot paw putt. All I know is that anyone with arms, working arms and working eyes and a working brain should be able to put this ball somewhere near the hole. It would be his first of the day. Oh my, oh my. go. No, no way, no way. Oh no, a tobacco road is like exponentially worse than an oh no anywhere else. No way, no way. Be gone. No way, no. Come on. There's no way this ball is going to leave. There's no way this ball is going to keep going. Don't. There's no way this ball is going to keep going. No, no way. Stop. 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 No! <laughs> no! <laughs> Maybe the best moment in foreplay history. I feel bad for Frankie, but I also feel good because oh yep. 
I like that it can also happen to figure that out. That's the worst thing I've ever done on a golf course, I think. <laughs> no way! Holy shit! Oh my God. How is that possible, bro? Oh, yeah. It's a seven oh. foot butt! <laughs> Surely he will get up this hill. Oh, no. Not again. <laughs> Give me my wedge. Throw me my wedge. I can't do this. That boat was for, was for like for par. I'm gonna make a ten. No way. No, dude. Third time's a charm for the struggling Borelli. That's a quad. Here's your cool head cover, though. Quarter cover didn't help. The nightmare front nine continues. Number six is a pretty standard par three, playing about 130 today. The most interesting part of the hole is that there are two sets of tees giving you two different angles to play the screen. Both of them are very long and skinny. But what makes it so complicated is that from one set, you have a lot of depth but not a ton of width. And from the other, it is the opposite. Hit it. Oh! oh. That was good. Seven is a downhill par four with one of the largest greens here. You can sometimes see the flag from the tee, but in true Strand's fashion, he gives you a natural aiming point. That big tree in the middle of the fairway is directly behind the green. And that fairway is as wide as it looks. Yeah. yeah. That was roasted. Aim for the big tree and you'll be happy like Trent is here. Hell yeah. Only person I have that will bring it four times. I got excited. Tweet, 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 tweet. The eighth hole par three is one of the longer ones on the course. The big thing is to make sure you get it to the correct tier on the green, or in Trent's case, be able to at least hit the ball right-handed. Try a lefty shot? Just roll, just roll. Oh, just not. Okay, all right. Not, not great. Not bad, not bad. With the pin in the middle, it is imperative to get it up there because we don't want a repeat of what happened on number five. It just didn't make it. Crazy hard. Tobacco Road is one of those courses that anybody would love to play another time a second time. It's very intimidating off the tee. There's these crazy mounds and dunes and bunkers. And you learn that like for the most part, they're not really in play. What sucks is if you miss, you don't have to miss by a ton, but when you miss, you can just end up in horrible spots. To finish up the front, we have the number one handicap hole. A decent par four that requires a well-placed tee shot to a very, very uphill approach. If there is one place you don't want to be, it's in the right green side bunker. Just ask Riggs and Trent. I mean, it was a tough shot. It's a very tough bunker. But like, if you're gonna post scores, you gotta be able to get out of the fucking bunker. And I just couldn't get out of that bunker to save my life. Yeah. Asshole. Fuck that bunker. That bunker kicked my ass, man. I've, I've left my soul in a few bunkers throughout the United States, and that's one of them. Where at a certain point, I think I'm going to need a sleeping bag, I'm going to need snacks, I'm going to need a meal, because I'm just going to be there for hours and hours and hours. Yes! Woo! That's a lot of jobs. 43 for me, 55 for Frankie. Trent with a 60. Yep. Uh, I have six skins. Trent has two. Frankie has zero. This is a carryover. Uh, Trent's currently at 
95 under for the week. Okay. Uh, Frankie is at 25 under for the week, and I am at 23 under for the week. That was hard. I'm looking around. I'm jacked up about where we are, and you still got half the round in front of you. So I was optimistic at the time. I am not hitting the ball. If I had a better brain, I'd be able to salvage at least a couple holes. You know what this feels like right now? It feels like uh, a Bourne movie, where they'll bring Jason Bourne in, and they're like, do you remember what you did over this course of this period of time? And I'm like, oh. no, I don't know. And I like, I, you know, I beat up a bunch of people in a restaurant, and then I just left. That's how I feel right now. I, I know how Jason Bourne feels when he's in those rooms. On to the back where number 10 is a bit of a breather after nine. A sweeping downhill, slight dogleg right par four. Ample fairway with a massive waste area lining the entire right side. It's a straightaway drive with a decent second shot that breaks you into the back nine well. A pretty calm hole. It's a bar. I'm not gonna shoot another 55, 57, 59. I'm not coming out here losing the trend. I'm not doing it. First one of the day, it deserves this. Yeah, and we were off and rolling. Number 11 is a beast of a par five and is a great example of Strance's ability to make a player choose. Another big risk versus reward hole and I'll let Frankie explain why. So the 11th hole at Tobacco Road is a hole that we heard about all day long. And they're like, wait until you get to the 11th, you're going to see what's equivalent to a golf Grand Canyon. Like you're on the fairway, you're on the screen, you're looking down at this thing. If you slip into this bunker, you can just break your neck. It's a huge drop off. The green is tucked way back above said Grand Canyon. Get up, ball! Grabbed a four iron, I nutted up and I hit it over that over that Grand Canyon of a bunker, and it just got up there onto the green. It was one of the best shots I've hit in a long, long time. Frankie is there in two, while Trent is having trouble focusing on his approach. Is that fucking bird serious? <laughs> that, <don't work. laughs> that bird was sabotaging me. That bird, if I wasn't standing Shot. there, that bird would not have been making those noises. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Do birds run out of breath? That's a, <laughs> a joke. That's a joke. Come on. Dude, get a birdie of your own, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Kinda played it. Alright. Oh, that was incredibly stressful. It's straight up. Not a lot of green to work with. And not very, very friendly sand, so. Let's out. <laughs> <gasps> wow. Oh! Wow! Birdie number 11, one of the hardest holes in the golf course. <laughs> you know what? I came, I saw it coming. It's a birdie for Riggs. A birdie for Riggs and Frankie, and off to number 12. A par four dog leg left, and you can definitely cut the corner. The tee shot is the key as far as how much you want to leave yourself in. Cutting the dog leg makes it shorter, but the safer play is hitting a wood or hybrid laying up with a long iron approach in. Well, once again, you must be precise with trouble on both sides of the green. Get out! Oh, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Dude, there's no way I'll make that. Okay. That's a good producer to challenge me in that moment. People forget that I'm an athlete. I'm an athlete. I played high school football. I don't I wasn't great. I wasn't terrible. But I can I can move it out there. This would be huge to go back to back birds. Huge. Golf gods don't like that, man. You just kind of got robbed there, man. It's hard to get away with that super early fist pump. <laughs> well, that sucks for Frankie. 
We move to 13, a par 5, double dogleg. If you really want, you can cut the corner and go for it, but you most likely won't find your golf ball. There are two entrances down there, with the further one being the place to aim. It will put you in a good spot to lie up and you have a three-shot hole. This was actually the first hole that Strand saw. It showcases the quote, to do or not to do of his work. Feast or famine, he makes you think and tests your ability to make a decision on the fly. When you see this hole, when you're watching it from a, a bird's eye view, the green's impossible. You can't run it up or anything. You'd have to hit this thing like 215 with like a fucking uh, Phil Mickelson fade into the into the green. With like a hybrid. Yeah. Absolutely. You're not gonna be able to convince me otherwise. Oh no. Tread! Bring my putter! Bitch. See, I didn't yeah, I don't see that last part. But in that moment he thinks he dominated me. And I did end up getting the putter because I only heard the first part. So him calling me a bitch when I couldn't hear it, par for the course, no pun intended. Yeah. Par, Frank. Thank you. We're gonna keep this, this par train rolling. We're minus one through four. See, I'm just ignoring the front. 14 is a par three, about 140 yards to carry the water all down the right side. But water quickly became the least of Frankie's worries. They got nothing better to do? Get back in your carts. Pull up to 14 and all of a sudden, you know, every kid in fucking the state of North Carolina is there with a cart parked behind the green like an army getting ready to go to battle. So now I'm starting to get nervous. Like anyone knows, the, it's like first tee jitters. You got all these people behind you. In this case, you got them behind the green, which is even worse. <laughs> they got me going, man. I don't know. I don't know if this is the right call. I've never seen that over the ball. Just check it. Like, shit. <laughs> I got the wrong club in my hand, man. <laughs> I was a, I was just a mental head case on the, on the tee box. <laughs> my legs are shaking. I gotta get them. They've <laughs> seen you hit a worse shot than you're gonna hit right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Pirelli. Oh. oh. So you whiff one, you're in the drink. Then you're just like not over the drink yet. So now I got to hit another one, which that was, in, that was incredibly more intimidating than the first one. I, I, I feel better that you're here. I didn't think I, you would be here. <laughs> Neither did I. <laughs> Daddy? Wait. Get up. Get up. You know, so, oh. All right. Sometimes you just got to hit it, you know? Oh, he's walking it in. Oh! <laughs> Whoa. 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 Nice. The only reason I'm putting this is because you guys are here. <laughs> <laughs> boy, oh boy, did he not even come close. Did he even touch the hole? That's the moment that those guys wanted. They wanted that laughing. Let's, oh, we went to the back of the road and we saw Frankie stink at golf. Huh? I do. I do stink at golf. A quick meet and greet and we're on to the par for 15th. It's a tough, tough hole to lose a stroke on. When you're putting for birdie, you make a bogey. At Tobacco Road, you find yourself hitting a number of blind shots, and this tee shot is no different. If you aim on the right center of the fairway, it will kick a little bit left. A good drive for these guys is going to put them inside 100 yards. The green is what will get you. Anywhere right of this flag, and you're looking at a three pot. Will be good. Shot, Trent. Come back. Come back. Oh, oh. Wow. Trent, what a shot. Yes. Woo! What an up and down. <laughs> Hell yeah. What'd you make the par? It's par. Oh, shit. What a hole. That's a par, baby. That's a, that's a fucking par. 
first one of the day. I've made somewhat of a surge until the gallery showed up. That a boy, Trent. Off to the short par 416. You want something off the tee about 185 to get you over the mounds and you'll have a nice approach shot in. However, this green is treacherous. It is all uphill and your landing has to be perfect. Why oh, so much dirt Six to six to three. Skins. Six to six? Yeah. Who's got that three? Let me come back. Trent Day. Yeah, this is cool. This looks great. Why can't I play golf? Oh shit, you're gonna like that. That was an emotional roller coaster. I kind of bladed it. You could tell I hated the finish. This gigantic slope in the middle of the green. Rolls down the hill, disappears for a second. You're thinking, great, that's somewhere up on that little plateau. Excellent. And then it just reappears, picking up speed, rolling down to the abyss, to a horrible place. Go, go, go. Come on, sit. Oh, no. Dude, what the oh. fuck is happening here? <laughs> it looked like it landed pretty soft, and it just fucking comes back at me like it's on a slip and slide at 150 miles an hour. And and, ever, and once that happened, I was mentally destroyed on my next shot. Oh, oh no. I'm never gonna get up. I'm also gonna wrap my seven iron around that guy's neck. <laughs> When she came up to me and said that all you gotta do is relax, don't be fancy, hit it on the right side, I, that's all I needed, but had no one come up to me and like talk to me, I was so negative in my own head that I thought I was gonna be down there all day long. Oh no, Frankie is falling apart. However, a short par three on 17 allows Trent to come within one hole of tying the skins much for the day. Oh. Six to six to four. It'd be, be a real shame if I won this 18th hole. It'd be a real shame. This this T box that we just pulled up to? Bullshit. Bullshit. I mean, we, we drove by and Trank goes, look at this bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Trent, it is, in fact, bullshit. 18 is a par four dog leg left with an intimidating waste area you have to carry off the tee. And the grand scheme of things, it is not that far, but it is a daunting look. The play is the stovepipe that will put you towards the center and give you a good angle into the two-tiered green. And everyone's like, no problem, like you just fly it over there. Like who would ever hit that anyway? You just gotta get it up in the air, 100 yards and it's gonna be fine. And what do I do, of course, just to end this day? Oh no! Frankie hit a missile into the, into the wall of bunkers, and I don't think we ever found that ball. I mean, it, it clearly... <laughs> the, wall, the wall ate your ball. It clearly it's just in the wall. This hole is Now that sweet. I've hit my drive, I love this hole. Where do I drop? I feel like we've all been beat, beat up by the, by the bully. By the schoolyard bully just took us out back and just give us fucking wet willies. And... A tough finishing hole. A song. Best shot of my life. Absolutely. I mean, that could go wrong in a million different ways. Did I intend Holy to hit it left hell. so it would feed down into the, towards the hole? No. But it happened to work out that way. When we started getting this gallery, I was nervous the first, the first hole, which was 14. Since then, I made three pars. When the pressure is put on you without you, you know, without you wanting it, I guess you just kind of go into a mode. I'm a bit like Tiger in that way. I mean, it's a must play. I think it's like one of the funnest golf courses I've ever played. It's crazy. The Tobacco Road golfing experience is infinitely unique and challenging in like a, a fun and engaging way. Enjoyed it. Six, six, fun. six. What? It was great. That's the devil. That's the devil. That's the devil's number. That's the devil's number is six, six, six. 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 Great finish, Trente. 
But that one in particular was much different than any golf course I'd been to. Skins, we all have the same amount, which I think is pretty good. It's not an unplayable course. Like I said, I mean, I shot 113, which is like decent for me. That ain't bad. Right. There's holes where you're like, all right, I'm right in the middle of the fairway. I hit up on the green. And in most golf courses, you're like, worst that could happen is a five. At Tobacco Road, if you miss that first putt, a four turns into a nine. Like, you can play the hole pretty well and get it on or near the green and then just rack them up. It was a wonderful round on a uniquely stunning course that the group thoroughly enjoyed. Highly recommended by all. Next up, we head 20 miles southwest to the legendary Pinehurst Resort. How do I put on sunscreen? <laughs> Your face burning right now? Oh. I can barely smile. What'd you say before? You, not, you don't have much to smile. Okay, end the video.